Hey guys, welcome to our car slash house slash slash love shack. Love shack, courtesy of Indie Campers Portugal. Since I was 18 years old, I have seen these things roaming all over the States, all over Europe, Australia, and I've always wanted to get me one. So this camper is amazing. It's got two beds in case he gets sweaty or farts too much in bed. It's got a shower. Yeah, uh, the only thing about the shower is you can't really drop the soap in there. Like Absolutely I've, impossible to drop I've, the soap. I've tried to drop the soap and nothing happens. Not like it usually does. It has like power outlets out the wazoo. It's got skylights. Surfboards. It came with surfboards, wetsuits. Wet this one's for Andres, because he's learning. And this one's for me, because it's blue and I have a masculinity complex. Besides all the toys that this camper came with, Andres brought one of his own. Everyone, meet Ingrid. He's still learning how to use it. And again, we didn't have a lot of time here. He's a little paranoid about regulations, being an army guy, he's got to do everything by the book. So um, the footage that we have on this trip via drone, you're going to have to forgive, but <laughs> it's a work in progress. We have about a 48 hour window to see as much of Portugal as possible. So our first stop, it's Lisbon. We got stuck there though and had to have lunch, which, surprise, was pork and then more <laughs> pork. I've had prosciutto probably 16 times since I got here 36 hours ago. And then we had some pork for dessert, jumped on a train and went down to Faro to pick up our indie camper. So we're on a train going to uh, apparently heaven. In Faro, we were picked up by our friend Patricia, who works for Indie Camper. She told us where the best surf spots were, where the best places to camp, also known as park, would be, and also that there was a music festival that very night, about 20 minutes away, called Festival Med. It was very authentic, uh, but also very worldly. Andres just liked it because the headlining band was Colombian. It was awesome. On the way back to Lisbon, we made stops in Lagos. This is the secret entrance to Camilo's Beach. And this is the secret entrance to Camilo's Hole. Sagres, which is like a little peninsula, and at the very, very tip of it, the surfing starts. So it's 9 o'clock p.m. The sun's not even down yet. And no look at Andres. That's not our camper, by the way. That's one of those like lame campers for old people. Ours has a monkey on it, because it's cool. We're currently doing the narration in a place called Odesiexi, or o o Odesiexi? Odesiexi. Ode it's a sexy beach. A sexy beach. We just call it sexy beach, because sexy beach. it's beautiful. Well, check it out. And I think there's a nude beach nearby. Yeah, we're going to the nude beach, as voyeurs. We're bringing his drone. My favorite part of the trip was being able to park absolutely anywhere, right in front of the ocean. Just pop up into the bunk bed, open the skylight, and listen to the waves. Quite soothing. Uh, my favorite part of the trip was teaching Max Portuguese. How do you say, nice to meet you? Ah, uh, yeah, that's toque mi macaco. Toque mi macaco. Close enough. How do I ask for coffee? It's bocetem algun leche materno. What about, I'm American? It's eu despejo azúcar no meu suco de laranja. Eu estou sempre nu na internet. Yeah, that was a close second. <laughs> as much as we would like to keep talking to you about this trip, we've got about three hours of afternoon left here at Sexy Beach. So we're gonna go play in the ocean, maybe visit the nude beach. And go surf, and we'll see you guys later. Ciao, ciao. Hey, Max. Where do you think the Little Mermaid was sent? You're gonna say Portugal. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Um, is it Portugal? Um, maybe. <laughs> do you think mermaids have sex with humans? I think they have like sea condoms? And how did Ursula happen? Was it like an octopus and a human? Or an octopus and a 
mer person. What kind of underwater workout do you think King Triton did to get those abs? What do you think the background story is between Flotsam and Jetsam? Do you think feminist mermaids are offended that we call them maids? Do you think they'd prefer to be called like mer people? What do you think mermaids eat? Um, you think she eats fish? No, definitely no. not sushi. That'd be really messed up. I think she's just waiting to make flounder her next victim. Flounder's a bottom feeder. I feel like she'd be more of like a tuna <laughs> So are tops. Where do you think they poop? Out their butts. Yeah, no, like into what? The it's water, all the ocean. The ocean. But then it just like it's got to go right back in their face. You've never pooped in the ocean? Can't say I have. Just me then. Hmm. The seaweed is always greener than somebody else's lake. You dream of going up there, but that is a big mistake. Speaking of mistakes, under the sea.